Hello, this is Tyler White with Survivalpedia. We're going to talk to you today a little bit about the Survival MD, MD book and specifically first aid for victims of radiation. Now, this is a unique topic that not a lot of people have really been able to dig deeply into, and I'm glad that they have that in the book. The book is titled, What to Do When There Is No Doctor. Now, if you go to page 177, it talks about first aid for victims of radiation. First, check for breathing and pulse, start CPR if needed, take off the patient's clothing and seal them in a container. Part of the reason we're gonna seal them in a container is because we need to protect our, ourselves from them. We're assuming that we're in a situation where radiological contamination exists and therefore we have to protect ourselves as well as protect them. Another interesting thing about radiation specifically is that there's a half-life or a shelf life for different types of radiation. The worst stuff is over the quickest, and the still bad but not worst stuff is persistent, right? That's the stuff that'll kill you over a long amount of time. So when it comes to nuclear fallout, you wanna hunker down for a short duration of time, and then you want to gas mask protect yourself and suit protect yourself while you get out. The reason you hunker down for the short duration of time is because the initial radiation blast will penetrate cement. The other more persistent and less virulent stuff won't. So if you hunker down in the beginning, the first stuff burns out 24, 48 hours, two weeks, depending on what type it is. It's hard to give a specific example because there's different levels of radiation from nuclear bombs to dirty bombs and so forth. But the point is hunker down in the beginning, Get your kid on and get out after a few days so that you aren't being affected by the contaminants. Back to first aid for victims of radiation. We're gonna, ins we're gonna scrub the entire body with soap and water to remove further contamination. You, you're, you're removing particulates that are giving off heat, right? Giving off radiological heat. Dry the body with a soft towel and wrap in a blanket. Go to an emergency facility if possible. Do not apply ointments to burned areas as this holds the contamination in. Sway away from contaminated areas and contaminated clothing, meaning st stay away, okay? Meaning keep your hands off, don't touch it, don't let it affect you. Now, effects of radiation levels on the human body. Five to 20 rem. There's possible late effects, possible chromosomal damage. There's little, little particulates that are hitting your DNA and damaging it and breaking it apart. 20 to 100 is temporary reduction in white blood cells. This can affect your ability to stave off infections and diseases. 100 to 200 is mild radiation sickness. Within a few hours, vomiting, diarrhea, fatigue reduction in resistance to infection, again, because of a lack of white blood cells. 200 to 300 is serious radiation sickness effect, as in 100 to 200 rem and hemorrhage exposure is lethal doses. The exposure is a lethal dose. 10 to 35% of the population after 35 days. So that many people are gonna die within 30 days at 200 to 300 rem. Three to 400 is serious radiation sickness, also marrow and intestine destruction. So it burns the bone marrow and messes up your intestines. 400 to 1,000 acute illness and early death, and 1,000 to 5,000 acute illness and early death in days. This is a kind of a horrible way to go. Medical treatment for radiation exposure, doctors will use intravenous medication to increase the white blood cell, coming, blood cell count coming from the marrow. These are protein-based medications that can help prevent infection by having more infection cells fighting uh, whatever we've got dealing with, right? Transfusion may also be needed if the bone marrow is severely affected or there is active bleeding. Other treatments include potassium iodine, which replaces iodine in the thyroid gland. It prevents radioactive iodine from attacking the thyroid gland and the radioactive iodine is eventually cleared in the urine. Perusian blue is a dye that binds to radioactive cells in thallium. It allows these radioactive elements to be excreted in the stool. So it's kind of like, if you take a chemical that's bad for you into your stomach, we use this black uh, high carbon gel, we used to call camel snot as an EMT. And that high carbon gel 
because carbon is so porous, will bind with the chemicals. And once it's bound with the chemicals, those chemicals aren't gonna bind with you and it allows your body to flush it through the stool. In some instances, it's better to throw it up. In other instances, it's better to take the carbon and pass it through the intestines. And when it comes to these type of treatments, that's essentially what they're doing is finding uh, chemicals that will bind with the radioactive particulates and then give your body the ability to push those particulates out in urine or in stool. And this reduces the total radiation exposure because you're essentially removing it from the body. You can use supportive treatment for things like infections, fever, headache, diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting, burns, and dehydration. You should have things to treat these complications uh, of radiation in your medical kit. So have the medication that you could use, have ways to clean stuff, have body substance isol isolation devices all the way from gloves to suits to gas masks and so forth. And make sure if you do have these tools that they are rated for the level of radiation that you're expecting to deal with, right? A mask that actually has the ability to remove NBC, nuclear biological chemical and radiological contaminants from the air instead of just a N95 that's going to clean the dust out of the air. These tips and many others are in the Survival MD book. What to do when there's no doctor, go check it out. And hopefully this is valuable to you. Thanks for watching.